Hi, welcome to another video with me, Streaky. I am, for anybody that's new here, a mastering engineer of 25 years experience working on uh, some high-end projects and um, go to streaky.com if you wanna know more about that. But I'm here today to tell you what I know about a thing called parallel compression. Parallel compression is used for individual tracks, it can be used on your mix bus across the whole stereo track, and it can be used in mastering. So what it is essentially is using a compressor to really hammer the sound to get a really concentrated version of the individual track or the mix and blend that with the original sound. So, um, right, how can I explain this? Uh, hold on, wait there. Right, so here we go. This is a visualization that I've come up with for parallel compression. We have your original mix. You can see a kind of orange squash juice that's thin, not very full of flavor and color and stuff. So what we do, we get a really thick version of it, a really thick concentrated version, and we pour that into it. And what it does, it blends with the original thinner one so we have the really compressed, oh shit, that's straight all over my face. And that goes in there nice and thickens it up. And then you end up with a nice, thick, juicy sound from your concentrate, adding it in, blending it to the original thin one. So now you've seen that, let me explain to you how it works inside the computer so we can hear how that sounds. I'll show you a couple of ways how to do it. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you exactly how I do it for mastering with a little twist that I think you'll like. So here we are inside Pro Tools and I've got a track that was sent in by Luca. Uh, I'll, do a, I'll do a link below to him. So we've got this track, this is our original track, so this is our thinner drink, if we're still using that uh, visual analogy. So what I've done is I'll now, uh, I've duplicated a new channel. So in that new channel, I want another copy of that mix. So this is where we're gonna make the thicker, more concentrated sound. And so I want that routing to the same bus as this, so it can go to the same output. This is just my output channel here. And so what I want to do is bring up a compressor. So bus compressor. I uh, showed you how to do gluey compression before, so that's uh, in a link above or below in the description. Uh, so I've got it on a ratio of four to one. Uh, release time, I want it kind of slow, but not overly slow. I want a really fast attack time. Now the reason I want a fast attack time is because I want to strip the transients off, which is the start, you know, the attacky stuff. I want that off of this track because I just want this to be the big, thick, gluey, you know, compressed track. So I want this to the transients to come off the original and just thicken up the sound rather than it being this big sort of lumpy front. Front, I want that to be sharp. So that's why I do that. So let's hear how that sounds. What we're gonna do then, we're gonna take this down the level and we're just gonna blend it in. So we're blending in the more concentrated sound into the thinner or normal mix. And then we can hear that how that is. Now, why I've got this in two tracks is so that I can just hear what I'm doing on this compressor. So I'll just show you how that sounds first. So you can let's give it some volume. So you can hear it's grabbing the transients and it's just holding it and thickening it up. So I can hear what exactly what that compressor's doing. So let's just mute that, bring the level back down, and then we will um, let's play the first track and then you'll hear me blend it in and then I'll mute it in and out so you can hear what the effect is of it. You want to be listening around the kind of low end because that'll be the thing that shows up first but then if you then expand how you're listening into the mids and the tops then you'll hear how it does sound across the whole mix and it gives it a real solid floor to work from. Okay, blending in now. Then I'll put it in and out. Don't really need too much. The 
you really want this so it's pretty subtle. So uh, you don't want to blend too much in. So as I put too much in to start with, and you can hear it just kind of sounds like it's muddy and a lot of level. So you just bring that back using your ears until you get it to the point where you think, okay, that's in and out. That sounds pretty good. So let's have another play. Okay, so there you go. That's how you do it in a very basic form. Now, the way I work this normally is I won't put a double channel here because I don't want loads of channels. If I'm doing any edits or something to the main one, I, you know, I don't want to have to do that to the second one. So what I do, I have a send channel. So I've got another aux channel here. Uh, so in this aux channel here, uh, where I've, I've sent it in the sends here, two, three, and four. So I'm picking that up on the input of three and four there. Um, if I just move that compressor down, so we've still got the same settings as before. Move that down to, uh, we had that round there, three something. And then, so it's exactly the same thing, but what it means is that I just haven't got this other channel playing so that I can then, you know, use it in the same way. So you can hear how it'll work. So there you go, it's exactly the same thing. So if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, make sure that you press the like button. That helps the algorithm show this to more people like you. It also helps me out. Make sure you press the subscribe button as well and the bell because I do these every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then you won't miss out. Okay, back into the advanced tip. There you have it. That's kind of exactly the same thing. You're not using it as a, as a double track. You're using it as a send. Now, the joy of this is, let me show you another little trick that I do. And I do this uh, a lot. It's really good. What I'll do is bring up an EQ before the compressor. So what you can do is, so let's just grab a fab filter as per usual. And what you can do is strip the top end off so that you're just dealing with the low end here. I'll do it in that one again so you can hear what that's doing. So all I'm gonna be doing then, in effect, is compressing this low end, if I move that to there. So all this compressor is working on is all of this information here because I've trimmed it here. It's a bit more of an advanced thing, but what it does is it just grabs the low end and thickens that and leaves the rest of the top alone. So it's like a little side chainy thing. So you can hear it's just doing the low end. So all the tops are still in place. Just giving the low end some real thumb. Where I got this trick from is it's kind of a New York parallel compression thing where, you know, just to get that real kind of big low end going. So uh, yeah, I'll play it through so you can have a proper listen to how that's playing. a bit too much. So yeah, you can play around with this EQ as well, so you could do different things. You could also do that to the kind of top end to, to get a bit more smack. You can do it with the smiley face, but you lose a bit of the mid. So yeah, loads of ways to play with an EQ before you get into the compressor and then play with the compressor. Now you can use this on individual tracks. You can use it on a, on drums, really popular on drums uh, using parallel compression. Uh, and then in the same way, you can use it on a mix bus the same way that I use it in mastering. So there's a few, that's more advanced using it with some EQ before, but just as a standard kind of big thumpy glue sound just use that compression blend in the concentrate with the thinner one now the uh, watch the gluing video that's coming up next that will tell you uh, exactly how to use that compressor to glue it up so that you can practice this let me know in the comments how you use parallel compression how you set it up in Pro Tools or in your door it works pretty much the same in every door love to know exactly how you're using it because I'm always wanting to learn new little tips and tricks as well as you so I hope you've got something out of that I'll see you on the next video.
Bye.